Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. Hey, you all doing? Welcome back to some more Crusader Kings 3. Here today on the channel, we're going to be starting a brand new series as King Aegon II of House Targaryen, or the one true king of Westeros. We're playing on the Dance of the Dragons scenario. We're going up against the Usurper Queen, Rhaenyra. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like, subscribe if you're new. The difficulty is going to be hard for both factions. So, let's get stuck into the dance. Hopefully, the Targaryen dynasty doesn't fall into ultimate ruin. Okay, so war for the Iron Throne has erupted. We need to rally the troops against Rhaenyra the Wicked. So King Aegon has ascended the throne with his dragon, Sunfire, his Queen Helena, and three children. He is 22. He has the Baratheons with Boris, Jason of the Westerlands siding with him. Craig and Scar Stark, uh, Jane Aaron supports them along with the Valarians. He's vengeful, brave, lazy lustful and does have a lot of bad negative traits but going on the tradition of male preference primogenitor throughout the realm probably has more realm support so upon king viserys's death in 229 ac the lord commander of the king's guard sir Kristen cole later called the kingmaker defies the late king's wishes that will name his daughter the princess rhaenyra as his heir and cole instead crowns her younger brother prince aegon as king aegon ii a civil war between Aegon, Targaryen, and Rhaenyra for the control of the Iron Throne erupts, and then it's later known as the Dance of the Dragons. Unfortunately, in the show, we didn't see Kristen Cole crown Aegon. He just gets later referred as Kingmaker. We did see in the show, though, that Viserys went around and made a lot of the lords swear fealty to Rhaenyra, but I tend to side with Aegon's just because of male preference primogenitor. Rhaenyra seems way worse in the books, so I tend to side with him. So let me know in the comments, who do you side with? Who do you think has the better claim? I think it's about 50-50 online. I think most people that read the books tend to side with Aegon and the Greens claim slightly. But let me know. So here is the family tree. We've got Aemond with us with Vagar, Daron with Caesarion, and then we've got Rhaenyra with her four-pronged claim. The Arons, the Valarians and whatnot. We've got Jace, Luke, and Joff, who I see as illegitimate. I definitely think they are. Some people don't believe that, but I reckon they're Harwin Song's children. Okay, so we're going to make plans and preparations. So let's have a look around Westeros, who's potentially could come in on our side. So Boris is with us. Dawn is independent. They're not a part of the Seven Kingdoms. Lionel is a babe. And is currently ruled by a regent, so the High Towers ruled there. We've got Dalton Greyjoy. We could make him maybe the master of ships. And then we've got the Muppets in the Riverlands. Grover, Elmo, <laughs> Kermit, <laughs> Oscar, Jane Aaron, and then we've got Craig and Stark in the north. So they've got the numbers on us and the dragons. Okay, so we have to pick a Paragon. I kind of want to make Aegon a little bit more comp competent than what he is. Make him a warrior. Try and get him as much better warrior stats, I guess. He's just a bit mid at the moment. I think we'll start focusing on Marshall, even though he's gone into stewardship. Because I want to try and get him actively commanding. Sunfire isn't the biggest dragon. Vagar is. So, we're going to use Aemond and him. Probably aim and more, try and keep him sparingly. Otto is Hand of the King, Jasper is Master of Law, Tyland is Master of Coin, Boris is Master of Arms, Laris is our Master of Whisperers, we'll try and deploy him. Um, Ironrod uh, is Lord Jasper, so okay. And then we haven't even got an Admiral here, I guess we could name Aemond. I think they did that in the show. Didn't they mess that up though, wasn't he Master of something else? And then ships. Anyway, the High Sept in there as well. So let's just hope that Rhaenyra doesn't just get all her dragons to descend upon King's Landing, kill Vagar, and ultimately win. So we'll try and follow Sir Kristen Cole's plan, make Aegon a little bit more competent, go up the Crown Lands, maybe try and snipe Dragonstone. We'll see how we go. So let's appoint Aemond 
as master of ships and we'll try and get him involved in this war as much as possible okay so any other things we can do here a couple wars we can declare we can make some acolytes uh, we, let's try and ransom some of these lords for additional coin for mercenaries okay so am I happy with all this by default we have 15,000 men but dragons are gonna be the defining factor in this war Sir Crispin on the King's Guard Lord Commander we'll keep him as Lord Commander not the um, hand of the King and then I've got my boys Estamont rain we've got Arik so a lot of people loyal to me not the best but I'm sure this King's Guard will dwindle <laughs> as the war fully erupts um, looks like Sunfire, uh, Sunfire is ultimately deployed uh, we can't seem to invite dragon seeds by the look of it but King Aegon sits the Iron Throne the Conqueror's crown the Conqueror's name the Conqueror's armor and the Conqueror's sword so let's put the banners of House Targaryen up you should remember to do this every run just to get those additional bonuses and we've also got Balerion the Black Dreads skull and Let's add another one there too. We've already added the Iron Throne. And let's try and steal some more enemy banners, I suppose. Otto is our Hand of the King. Okay, so let's marry Jehera to Jeharis. I do like in the show, the second season, that <laughs> Aegon actually loved his son, Jeharis. That's kind of nice. So let's combine those claims. And then we've still got young Maelor, who isn't in the show for whatever reason, but I don't know if I ultimately agree with George's butterfly effect. We do need to get Aemond married off to one of the Baratheon girls. They skipped that, where he did a lot of creepy stuff. Um, I can't remember who he actually chose in the end, but it looks like we can choose the second daughter. Flora seems to have better traits here. So I might go with her. We don't really hear much about the Baratheons in the show. <laughs> they make a whole thing about Luke's death and the Baratheon support, but then they sort of get forgotten. <laughs> um, I, I think I think he marries Floris. I could be wrong, but I think we're going to go with the other one. Mm. No. Uh, maybe we'll go with Floris, actually. Okay, so Daron is currently in Old Town. We want to try and get him and Tesserion back to King's Landing because the Greens at now have the most dragon. Oh my god! Bartimus Keltigar with the Valyrian Steel Axe. We could marry... Because we got to marry Daron off too. Uh, maybe to the Martells, maybe. We just want to try and get more support. Maybe a Dane. We're just trying to find Daron a wife. Okay, so we could maybe plot against Rhaenyra and see how we go. Okay, because this war is going to be bloody. We're not in the best position, but if we can bribe some of the... Wait, we can bribe the White Worm? Hang on, maybe a lot of people just don't like it. Wait, Damon might be interested? What? 48. He's quite old now. Is he really meant to be 60 in the show? Um... Okay, hang on. So, the best way to get rid of a dragon rider is by poison. So, we don't have numerically enough dragons. We've also got Hugh the ha Hugh Hammer. We might be able to invite. Because she's got dragon seeds too. Yeah. I don't know why in the show they just... It, it wasn't mentioned like, okay, let's send every single dragon. I reckon if we can send all seven <laughs> just to attack Vega, you probably win. <laughs> okay. So, let's start a plot against Rhaenyra. Let's raise our armies. And we'll allow Aemond to take control. I would like... Oh, wait. Oh, Dalton Greyjoy declared his independence. Well, that's annoying. Jane Aaron, too. Interesting. So, she's fighting for her independence. She has two pup dragons now, though. Okay, so we're getting some of the crown land forces. I do quite like that we got to see Rosby and Stokeworth. The battle for Rook's Rest was kind of cool. I liked it. 
Except for the Darkland sigil was slightly wrong. <laughs> it was meant to be seven. Darkland badge is not six. Okay, so let's marry... I could marry Maylor to one of the Dornish. We don't want to dilute the blood too much. Uh, so it looks like Boris is coming to help us out now. We're rallying up at King's Landing with our forces. The AI is coming out to help as well. And then we'll start moving up the Crown Lands. And we'll try and bait them into an attack. So it looks like Aemond is going to be fully in control. Along with Kristen Cole. Oh, looks like the Valarians are sending some forces here. Interesting. But a lot of settlements are now under siege. So this is going to be tough, this war. Okay, so we can... We can't go with his daughter. Why is... We've still got a lot of Valarians here too. So... Corrine can marry Daron. That's probably not a bad idea. And we can get the Martell forces involved. Okay. I didn't realize Jason had so many children. Look at this. A lot of daughters too. We could marry Maylor to one of the Lannisters to keep their support. Because although they support Rain, um, they support Aegon's claim now, I'm thinking about after the dance too. Because we're probably going to have to deal with the Arons. We want to try and eventually bring in the Martells and then the Greyjoys. So let's betroth Maylor to Tayasha. One of Jason's daughters. So the dragon and the lion will wed. And we've got Corlys, his claim there. Yeah, so we've got Vaymond as lion. So it does look like a lot of the Valarians are still siding with us, which is nice. Some of them seem to be in Driftmark, though. Yeah, so Jace Valarian, 50, uh, 48, the cousin. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so she's got the numbers, she's got the dragons, she's got a lot of the support. We do have the biggest dragons, so that will count for something. But let's start making our way up through the crown lands and try and intercept some of the enemy forces. Bring some Darklands under our control. So Aemon's out here. Let's have our first battle of the dance. We still seem to have numerical supremacy and the Dornish are going to be brought in. But we want to try and keep the dragon riding ability pure in the bloodline and try and not breed out too much. Okay, so the first battle here with one, two, just outside Stokeworth. Can we call the Dornish? Call to war? Yes. So let's get them to come up. In the books, they actually start sided with the Stepstones. So having the Martells involved is a good idea. I don't know why they would, really. I guess instability in Westeros. And I guess they've accepted the marriage, too. The Riverlands is on fire. Damon, Matt Smith in Karen Hall is having his fever dream. Okay, so let's make our way up the Crown Lands here. And then we'll try and snipe Dragon's Zone. I don't know how hard it is it's going to take, but if we could capture it, that would be ideal. But we still might be able to bait someone over. Um, Lord Rosby demands trial by combat. Um, let's accept, because we've still got a fair few decent Kingsguard members. Estamon and Rain aren't the best. Maybe Rickard Thorne, who we got to see in the show. We've nearly seen... I think we have seen all of um, Akon's Kingsguard members. Do we really need to see Rickard Thorne? Maybe. Rain's not the best. Same with Estamon. Yeah, so let's go with Rickard Thorne. And allow him to do trial by combat. Oh, he's actually going to fight himself. And he's dead. <laughs> he lost to Rickard Thorne. Mathis Rosby. 29. Justice has been served. Lucky Fire wasn't called as the champion. Okay, so we're going to try and rush to Dragonstone. And hopefully try and take the castle. Unlike Loras Tyrell in Got. <laughs> Okay, so Lord Massey has come over. From Sharp Point. I don't know why they got that wrong. But Emmond is the Lord of Sharp Point. Okay, so why is Emmond not commanding? I could. Mm, no, I want Emmond. Where is Emmond? I went past him. There he is. 
We'll get Vega to control. Okay. So let's try and take... Dragon suit. Um... Daron. Wants to be... My squire. No, I don't think so. We can allow someone else to do that. He's probably going to get better traits from someone else. All right, let's try and move up to Dragonstone. 2,300. Mm, yikes. You do have to be careful as well, deploying dragons. I don't know if I really want to lose Vagar this early. Because he is our ultimate weapon. He should be able to win any dragon jewels quite effectively. The biggest and baddest dragon. Okay, so we've had one of our captors escape. Okay. So I think it was the play to come over here. Oh, so it does look like Rhaenyra has rallied up a little bit. With the Starks and the Arons bringing them down south. Okay, I don't know if sniping Dragonstone is the best play. But... We've kind of got them to leave Dragonstone. So I guess that's good. We didn't have to fight them on Dragonstone itself. Um... Aegon has entered Regency because he because he's oh he's commanding this okay just trying to get him some XP here we could use his personal golden sigil I don't know why they changed it in the show but whatever um, I think we'll continue with the red because we're the proper Targaryens I feel like using the gold would um I don't know. delegitimize us. So let's leave that regency there. Okay, so we're besieging Driftmark and Dragonstone. So we can't conduct a terror campaign. That's already being done. I guess we can don't use... So we can't use any of those abilities. I feel like in the um, earlier version you could. Alright, let's get Aemond back. So let's continue. So we're basically I guess law-wise... RP-wise, broken the Valarian blockade, allowing supplies into King's Landing. Let's move back now. We've allowed the Martells to come back up. And let's deploy here and just see if we get lucky. <laughs> it looks like a battle's going to ensue. So we're going to transport back over. And there are 90,000 here, but 60,000. But there's dragons involved. Oh no, but there's been a bunch of deaths. Sir Kristen Cole, a lot of people are being consumed by dragon fire. Kristen Cole, the kingmaker, is no more. He has now died in the crown lands to Melis, the Red Queen. Oh, wow. And it looks like we've lost Prester, another Kingsguard member. Oh, no, Lionel. Oh, sorry, Leon Estamont. Three Kingsguard members. Oh my god. Liquidated. <laughs> and we need a new um, Kingsguard member. I, I guess you wouldn't choose Arik, but... Because of his brother, Eric. Uh, Arik seems to be quite loyal, though. So let's name him. You never know. He might not last that much longer. Um, I think I want to choose those that are better suited for the job. Oh my god. We're going to need three. He's massive. He's a giant. Um, so Stefan Griffin. Oh, interesting. He's of, um... Oh, his mother is a Lannister. Interesting. So, so Stefan the Griffin is, um, half Lannister. Okay, so we'll allow Wallace Chester. We're probably going to allow all those guys, Adam, um, to join. Oh, okay, so ultimately we lose that. Yikes. So Aemond has a massive defeat. So not starting off well. Three Kingsguard members destroyed. A huge chunk of the army. And we've got some new Kingsguard members. Okay, we're going to de deny that trial by combat because we're going to be constantly dealing with them. But the Lannisters have put a member on the Kingsguard. Looks like we're fighting Greyjoys here, though. Dalton's now popped up. They're fighting against Aemond. He's now won. Okay, so I suppose we just go in again. We do have that plot against Rhaenyra too. We haven't seen her on the battlefield, so let's move up with Aemond and try and go again. Try and engage Melis, because she seems to be actively in combat here. Joffrey Valarian takes to the skies. Interesting, got to watch out for him now. Let's go back in again. Another battle is ensuing. 
We're making good friends. Okay. Oh, nice. The death of a dragon rider. Aemond, the one eye on Vega, has killed Rhaenys Targaryen. And Melis as well. The green. Sorry, the <laughs> Rhaenyra's faction has lost um, their biggest and baddest dragon. And we've won. Okay, so after losing three Kingsguard members, Aemond has managed to take out their biggest dragon. Okay, so we've still got that plot against Rhaenyra too. She seems to be in active combat, but we're going to be able to have a result on that soon. But it looks like Hugh Hammer, Damon, and Mazaria are like, yeah, you look, look, you know what? We actually might back that plot with the Martells involved. The well, the realm is burning. Um, let's continue. May Lord to be running a muck around the Red Keep, I guess. Sure. Okay. So, nice. The drink of life. Let's see if we can get rid of Rhaenyra and get this war done. <laughs> nice! And she's been taken out. Rhaenyra has died. And that is the end of the dance. With her dead... Damon, I guess, has submitted to. Oh, but it's invalidated the war. That is such an annoying thing to do. But we did what Damon said. It's much easier to take out a dragon rider by poison rather than fight. So we did have one big dance. Cyrax has now become a wild dragon. And Princess Rhaenyra has been taken out by her own council. Who, you can tell in the show, didn't really overly support her anyway. But... We've got peace, but there's still a lot of traitors and rebels to deal with. We're going to try and ransom a bunch of the lower lords, because we now need to rule. Bunch of pipers, river lords, so, and brackens as well. So, let's go through and ransom to try and get as much money as we can from what we lost. So, we've won the Dance of the Dragons. However, there's still a lot of traitors, illegitimate children, and heirs we have to deal with. And Queen Jane of the Vale rebels still. Let's dismiss Aemond as regent. Um, and let's grant a pardon to him. I don't know why he was rebelling. Um, let's make Otto both of Jaehaerys and Jaehaerys's. Um, guardian, and we can make some more ac uh, acolytes, which I forgot to do. Okay, so Jane Aaron with two dragons still rebels. Dawn is not quite on our side. Through an alliance, yeah. And the Greyjoy still rebelled too. Okay, so now with the war ended, Jace, Luke, and Joff have now been imprisoned. So we're going to have to deal with them. And damon has been imprisoned as well. So, we're going to have to deal with the traitors, I suppose. Corlys Valarian has been imprisoned too, along with Ulf, Nettles, and various other dragon riders too. We couldn't seem to find Hugh Hammer. I think he died in this. So, let's deal with their children. So, renounce your claim. Like We could do that. We could banish from the realm. So, I think we'll do that. Join the Night's Watch... Renounce your claim. Unfortunately, your dragon will be killed. But you can go to the wall. And he's going to decline that. That's the deal. So Aegon is going to be quite merciless. So if he's not going to accept that, we can't allow Jace to live. So we will get Kinslang. I wish the secret could be revealed so then we don't get that. Because it's technically not his nephew. So burn with dragon fire. Feed to the dragon. I think dragon flame will be more merciful. So, Jace is going to refuse. We're going to give the same offer to Luke. He's going to decline. And then with Joff too. Okay. Nettles will banish. Hmm. Take a vow. Okay. So, we'll banish. Ulf the White. Your dragon will be killed. 
And we'll banish. He's going to accept the banishment to the wall. So Ulf is going to go to the wall. Damon on Caraxes. You can join the Night's Watch. He's going to refuse. He will not join the Night's Watch, so he will be taken out by Dragonfire. He can take a vow and become a Septon, though. So, Daemon Targaryen, my uncle will be no more. Callus Valarion is going to accept the banishment and join the Night's Watch at 77. I hope he doesn't get a cold up there. So he's going to be sent north, and we've dealt through a lot of the claimants. Now we do have Damon and Rhaenyra's legitimate children, Aegon, so a lot of these dragons are gone wild now with the death of their riders. So I don't feel like Viserys and Aegon should be dealt with. So we've got Baylor and Ray. oh Rhea, Rhaena here. Um, you look, you look, look, you know what? Although we use the Baratheons, the Martells, and the Lannisters for their support, I think we're better off now that Jace and Luke are no more, the betrothal's been broken. We're gonna marry Aemond to Baylor and Daron to Rhea, Rhaena, and that will, I think it's a smarter play to combine those claims. Because we basically want to try to avoid future issues. Then we've got Aegon here too. And Viserys. And we'll make them cupbearers and bring them into the fold. But they will have a slight claim, I guess. So we basically just need to support Jaehaerys' claim. We just need to clean up after the dance. Okay, so Nettles is going to Essos. Ulf has joined the Night's Watch. Along with Corlys Valarian. So, he might be able to buy his way up <laughs> to become Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. So, it looks like that Valarian line has died. And, essentially, Driftmark is... Wait, Driftmark's going to fall to Baylor? Interesting. I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. Aegon is currently the heir. Interesting. They don't like... It. My nephews don't like me simply because we've, um... Taking out Jace, Luke, and Joff, I suppose. <laughs> oh, okay, so Vaymond. So that's Vaymond's line. Okay. So now they've gone to Driftmark. They should really be ruling, I think. Jace, Monfred. So still a bunch of Valarians loyal to us. We still could marry into that house from, like, Vaymond's line onwards. Okay, so Viserys can marry the Baratheon daughter, so... We'll still get that alliance, but we're just slightly just going to switch around the betrothals, I think. Okay, so we now have peace in Westeros for now. The Dornish aren't too happy. We're going to have to bring them into the fold. The Vale still rebels under Jane. She calls herself Queen of the Vale. And Dalton Greyjoy too. So we're going to start making plans and preparations now to go after... Queen Jane. So, unfortunately, on that note, I've got to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the first episode of my Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones Dance of the Dragons campaign as playing as the One True King Aegon the Second. We've won the Dance of the Dragons with a little bit less bloodshed. We didn't lose too many dragon riders in the process. However, Aegon's claim is not fully secure as the Arons, the Greyjoys, and the Martells still rebel. We're going to have to go against her. Going against the Arons in the Bloody Gate in the, in the Vale and the Eerie is still going to be quite hard. But Rhaenyra, the Usurper, is no more. Same with her legitimate children. But Westeros still needs to be brought to heel. Um, I suppose Craig and Stark and the Tullys have been spared in this timeline. But we've dealt with a lot of the traitors. And now... We're going to try and conduct a military campaign. We'll try and get Aegon to level up um, too, I suppose. So this conquest of the Vale could make him um, a bit more of a competent military commander. But stay tuned for episode 2 coming out soon. 
I'm back now from my short hiatus. And there's plenty more Crusader Kings 3 and uh, Game of Thrones content and videos and campaigns I plan to do. Let me know other campaigns and uh, factions and people I should play as. So like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Stay subbed to Simsy Total Warfare for more Crusader Kings videos. I still maybe wouldn't mind doing a Belisarius campaign at some point too. But anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simsy. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.